You might recognize the symbol. You'll definitely recognize the name. Alien Colonial Marines were here in freezing London to talk to Gearbox and Sega about the movie tie-in that was due out early next year. And we've just come out of a rather nice presentation by Gearbox, unfortunately unable to film to show you off the, uh, the opening of the campaign, but we are able to discuss a little bit of what we saw. Um, the, obviously if the game takes place just after the events of the second James Cameron film, and we take up a, a brand new squad of Marines picking up the distress call handed out by the Sulaco and investigating to find out what exactly has went down. Now, during the gameplay shown in the presentation, um, we were patrolling the corridors of Sulaco very, very tight, but we came into s sort of smaller yet large open areas and um, which were swarming with xenomorphs. Now, Gearbox have confirmed that the movement of the xenomorphs will be dynamic, will be in real time as they take advantage of every single surface, so you'll be cr they'll be crawling on walls, they'll be crawling on ceilings. They'll also be taking themselves through air ducts and pouncing at you from behind. The dynamic movement of the xenomorphs uh, adds a little bit of fear factor to the combat. The acid doesn't burn you completely. Uh, obviously enough, if it was tying into the films and keeping it true to the films, you'd be dead pretty much instantaneously as soon as you unload a shotgun shell into an alien's face. Um, there is armor that will be degrading as the acid burns through it and then it will burn through to your actual normal health bar. So with, with that element in place, it's still slightly scary facing the aliens. Um, you, we, we saw during the presentation two or three attacking us at the same time and it was very much about backing the hell up and just unloading whenever they got anywhere near. With, the, um, with aliens crawling all over the place on the ceilings and stuff like that, you're having to pull up your motion tracker a lot more separate from your pulse rifle to check whereabouts they're going to strike from next. Now, from the campaign element that we saw, um, you were actually on board the Sulaco trying to pick up um, various little hints and tidbits as to the events that have went down. There is eggs, there's marines, ex-marines shall we say, that have now become incubation cells for uh, the xenomorph. And there's the xenomorph himself, which comes in a large variety of types. Unfortunately, we only saw the soldier which is the quintessential alien uh, during this campaign presentation. There will be other xenomorph types though during the game. Gearbox confirmed during a uh, post-presentation Q&A there'll be multiple types, including the boiler, which are aliens that have survived the blast from the film and apparently are going to be really odd looking. I'm not too sure how to term that beyond that. We will be seeing them in the multiplayer modes that we'll be getting hands on with shortly. Uh, we're getting to see the extermination mode, escape mode, as well as trying our own hand at the campaign. Other stuff detailed during the Q&A, there will be uh, character upgrades, uh, more sort of customized, you know, face paint and armor and stuff like that to distinguish your character during the multiplayer segments of the campaign and the multiplayer modes. There will, be, there will also be weapon upgrades and uh, we spotted dog about the level um, the guys that were playing picked up dog tags and also there's mention of legendary weapons, weapons that you've seen in the film franchise that will be making an appearance in here. Unfortunately, well, they said engineers um, because there was a point in question about Prometheus. Engineers won't be in this uh, game. They did state that engineers won't be walking around in this game whether that's a very specific phrasing and there may be something else to see in the game thus far. We will have to find out later on when the game releases next year. We're going to go in, we're going to also talk to Gearbox, ask them about the development process of the game and also give our impressions from the hands-on. So, join us shortly. <laughs> All right, we've just finished off a 10 minute run through of Aliens, the extermination mode. Uh, five minutes per round, uh, switch sides between Aliens and the Marines. Marines are basically trying to capture points that the Aliens are also trying to defend. 
Um, whilst Marines had, there was the option for five different loadouts, Marines unfortunately were stuck on the default, which was basically assault rifle, shotgun, pistol. Um, so it wasn't much of a chance to really explore what the options were with the Marine loadouts. Aliens, on the other hand, we got to flick through uh, three different xenomorphs. Uh, there's the standard soldier xenomorph as well as a spitter and a lurker. The, pre the last two of those um, offered uh, slightly different variations for attack styles. The spitter did long range attacks that you have to charge up by holding down a button. And basically you would see the um, reticule lift up and at that precise point when you've got it near a marine, let go, fires out. With the lurker, it had a points maneuver. Now we find um, it was incredibly hard to get anywhere near the Marines unless you actually used uh, the alien's ability to climb on walls. Holding down left trigger, like you just basically climb up wall on ceiling and stuff like that. And you really sort of had to hide and time your response or time your attack to be successful. You're not just stuck with the uh, default loadouts from uh, the starting screen. Uh, Dogging around the map are power-ups, both for the aliens and Marines. Marines, obviously enough, extra weapons, so we're seeing the smart gun. I picked up a rocket launcher, and unfortunately within about three seconds, because of the fright of an alien jumping on me, unloaded it into a wall, killed myself instantaneously. Not a smart move, guys. Don't try that at home. Alien-wise, we did actually see a boiler, uh, one of the boilers that was mentioned uh, during the presentation earlier on. Um, you could actually go over uh, as an alien and sort of awaken it and then take over the boiler's form. Um, sort of slower moving alien, but had a really nice sort of almost suicidal attack that once it died, it exploded uh, in a big fucking blast of acid, which uh, could take like a few marines if they're close by. Uh, each of the aliens had a fatality move, um, which was dependent on which uh, xenomorph you were controlling. Uh, we saw the classic lift and gut punch move by the soldier, which was bloody horrific. Um, there's also an acid rain version for the spitter that does a sort of like more wide scale attack. And the lurker also had a, um, a maw move, which unfortunately we didn't get to see during the course of the, uh, the, the game. One map, um, sort of circular area with uh, a few smaller rooms that were sort of alien nests as well as exterior places that were either down the ground with a lot of uh, containers, cargo containers and walls for the aliens to jump from as well as a sort of like uh, a higher point, elevated point for the Marines that was offered good covering fire because you could actually sort of see around most of the map. It does seem pretty much in favour of the aliens given the, the wealth of um, attacks that you do get. However, they do they do go down very quickly under marine fire. I mean, playing as marines you maybe unload most of a clip into an alien and they're dying. So I think I think they're still trying to work out gauge basically the uh, the strengths and weaknesses of both sides. But it's an interesting mode that really want to spend a good couple of hours playing through before we actually get a, a good overall feel for how the mode's gonna pan out. 17 weeks ago, USS Sulaco was reported destroyed. And yet, it's on the other side of that door in orbit over LV-426. Bruno 2-1, this is Sephora Actual. Winner is en route to aid with Kazavak. What the hell is going on? Is there a definite end to the Colonial Marines? Or have you left any teasers there? Oh, there's always room for, for more. Um, it's, it's a really exciting universe. Um, and I, if you, again, going back to the movies, I mean, how many of the movies really ever have an end? I mean, d does Alien have an end? Does Prometheus have an end? Um, so it's a, it's a whole story that any player, whether you're an Aliens fan or not, you're going to be able to come in, you're going to get a complete story from beginning to end. But, you know, as game developers and as storytellers, we always want to leave that question in your mind, that one little niggling detail in your mind that you want to, you want that answer to, you want to come back for that last little thing, because, you know, that's what makes storytelling fun.
All right, we've just had hands-on with the campaign. Um, unfortunately, not right from the start. We're, we're throwing in about Mission 4 or so. There's a little bit of mystery about how you've actually ended up on the planet. Uh, apparently, there is missions beforehand where it takes place on Sulaco, and for some reason, uh, both Sulaco and your other ship crash land into the planet. You managed to make a last-second escape on a dropship, uh, which unfortunately crashes as well. Not a great day if you're a Marine. And you have to explore the planet and get yourself into Higley's Hope and re-establish communications um, with any other survivors that may have landed on the planet as well. From what we played, touched a lot on uh, the moments, the key moments that you saw early on in the Aliens film where you're patrolling around a colony and trying to piece together exactly what's happened. It's nice little touch points. We noticed um, there's audio logs that um, listening to is actually has Newt's mother on it and you're just picking up all bits of motion on your tracker here and there but there's no real reveal until late on uh, once you set up motion sensors around um, the operations room from which you work from and you get your first wave of aliens attacking you, obviously of those big scary moments that we remember so well and so vividly from the Aliens film. Um, you're paired up with a, another Marine um, who has a bit of back chat and a bit of conversation that you have during the course of exploration and exploring uh, the colony suggests there's a lot more detail into the characters and the backgrounds of each individual Marine. Uh, seems to be a case of relationships going on um, before the game starts and will continue on and obviously have reached their climax during the course of the title. Um, the combat system is very much the same as we tried in the multiplayer modes earlier on. Uh, pulse rifle shotgun as default. Uh, it's also pulse rifle has a secondary grenade function on it as well. Um, it ends really with you in the operations centre uh, trying to defend it from swarms of aliens um, which forces you to go back, backtrack into the corridor you explored earlier on, pick up a smart gun, pull back, drop it and let it do its business. Um, very small sort of condensed levels so far, corridors like we said, very representation, uh, representative of the corridors of the colony we saw in the film. So it's a bit hard to sort of get a grasp of how, how this is going to be for the game entire. But at the moment that sort of element of claustrophobia, that element of surprise attacks and everything like that is still very much in evidence here. It's obviously very hard with uh, a game based on a film that was being out for over two decades now to actually get any sudden scares in it. Um, we're used to seeing that build up towards the first alien appearance as we're seeing in Alien and Aliens. So in that sort of respect you're basically working your way through the corridor knowing what's to come and just waiting for that moment. Um, and also the other problem is the aliens themselves don't quite as move as smoothly or as swiftly as their movie counterparts. Obviously they've tried their best to impress upon the player the feeling of being swarmed by this xenomorph, but um, to make it obviously possible to take them down, they've had to perhaps slow down their movements, make their movements a little bit more routine. So you'll see them sort of jump back, you'll see them jump on the ceiling. Um, but when they do dash towards a number of times, aliens just sort of leapt out from nowhere, was particularly impressive. Um, but again, whether you get used to that by rote, by seeing these aliens over and over again over the course of the campaign, whether those scares will continue after your second, third, fourth hour is yet to be seen. And we liked very much that towards the end of the demo, we saw not only the James Cameron version of the aliens, but the original Geiger alien as well, suggesting that there's a lot more variants that we'll see uh, over the course of the campaign. So, hands on, enjoyable, impressive, but very much want to see the entire game in total. Ah! All personnel should follow emergency procedures and head for a contained area.